Welcome to this special issue of People's Health Dispatch, which we have put together for 7th April, People's Health Day. For this video, we interacted with three health activists from across the world and tried to understand what does health for all mean for them and how does it impact their work. Through these interactions, we have tried to understand how the larger issues of health that impact patients, healthcare providers, and communities in general. So we have with us today, Abhishek Royal from India, Rihanna Osborne from the United Kingdom, and Dennis Seffer from Brazil. Welcome you all. I'm Dr. Abhishek Royal. I'm, I'm a medical graduate from India, and I have been working in public health fields at grassroots level since 2014. Since uh, I was in medical school at that point of time, final year, and I realized the importance of uh, community-led work and community-owned uh, work, I would say, to reach out the maximum people uh, in healthcare services. Uh, I, I, I myself got exposed uh, uh, during my uh, during my postings, and it was uh, it, it gave me a, a chance that to understand what is the issues at the grassroots level because. Uh, as a healthcare professional working at peripheries, it was something very unusual to me. Uh, for me, health activism is something which I have learned from my experiences. Is uh, see, uh, activism is not something that uh, that is only done in fields because I have done activism from both the sides. I am into doing. Uh, evidence-based work uh, and now and translating that evidence into policies and guidelines so that uh, uh, the, all the decisions that are taken at the programmatic level should be evidence-based, taking into consideration the, that the society is having uh, all the inequities and all the other parameters of that are affecting healthcare of the masses. Health for all for me is like, if I am a, a person uh, and I should not be at the mercy of uh, of my uh, of my provider uh, to avail the best healthcare services uh, that that is possible for any of the condition that I am living with. Be it mental health condition, be it uh, any cancer therapy, be it any preventive therapy, also be it any well-being, also uh, be it availability of safe drinking water or uh, or, or, or uh, testing services for tuberculosis. So for me, health for all, if if uh, if I'm a person, I'm an anonymous person, I should be able to get these services without thinking okay, what is there in my pocket. As a, as a community person, I have to think, okay, where I'm gonna get the money to avail the best healthcare services for any kind of ailment or any kind of prevention or my well-being, then, uh, then I would say my health, health is compromised. And this is, where I wish that uh, the entire health for all should be there. Yeah. My name is Rhiannon Osborne. Um, I am a medical student based in the UK. Um, and I work mostly with um, PHM UK and also with the Ecosystems and Health um, Global PHM Circle. I also work with universities allied for essential medicines on access to medicines work. Um, and the Stop Cambo Coalition in the UK to end oil and gas expansion um, and Health for a Green New Deal, um, which is a coalition of health workers um, advocating for a transformative and globally just Green New Deal in the UK. Well, for me, I think health for all means a lot more than health care for all. I think those are very different things. Um, and of course, I sort of believe health care for all is part of health for all, um, but by no means the the sum of it um so for me i think health for all means recognizing that health is collective that it is ecological it's political it's social it's economically determined and that um people cannot be healthy in isolation you can't be healthy in a capitalist society which puts profit over your over your well-being at every at every turn you can't be healthy in uh, an economy which is destroying the, the planet that, that we love and are in relation with constantly. Um, and you can't be healthy in isolation. You can't be healthy if your community suffers from horrendous inequality or if you can't take care of each other. So 
that's kind of how I view health for all in that very holistic sense of building flourishing societies. Um, and that's how I came to work on the climate crisis and how that interacts with health, um, both through the fact that the climate crisis will have a huge impact on health, worsening health inequalities. Um, but actually, for me, the thing that kind of resonates more than that is how the systems and industries which are causing the climate crisis are also already bad for our health and are already causing health inequalities um, throughout the whole kind of process. So like the food system that we have destroys the planet and also does not nourish us and facilitates huge amounts of injustice when it comes to access to nutritious food. And the energy system that we use is designed to facilitate wealth transfer from the global south to the global north to feed overconsumption in the global north whilst denying much of the majority of the world access to basic energy needs and all at the same time kind of uh, violating the rights of local communities um, who live near or on or around natural resources. So I think for me a big part of the work is thinking about how not only are these industries causing the climate crisis but they're also causing ill health the whole time, like even before um, we get to the point of the of the climate crisis. So, so yeah, I would say that that's kind of a summary of how I came to the work. My name is Denis Safer. I live in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I am from PHM, Brazil, and I also work as a, a primary healthcare uh, manager here in Brazil. Um, and well, I've been the last years uh, very engaged with the um, uh, struggle for the right to health here in Brazil and uh, the construction of the SUS, Sistema Único de Saúde, uh, Unified Health System, I think it would be the translation, to guarantee its uh, f financing, to guarantee uh, conditions for the workers, uh, defending uh, primary health care and uh, community-based uh, mental health care uh, strategies uh, here in Brazil and um, in various movements, in campaigns for uh, guaranteeing uh, the Essex uh, to the health system and campaigns for um, against the privatization and the um, dismantling of uh, the health system and the primary health care, occupying um, um, health office buildings and uh, working on strikes. Um, and uh, well, I met the health for our uh, campaign uh, through PHM. So uh, I think it was 10 years ago, uh, I was a student at the International People's uh, health University and um, it was very important to me to know the references and uh, the broad construction around the, the sense of health that uh, the Health for All campaign has. So um, going beyond the, the health system, so uh, here, in Brazil, here I'm very linked to the, the health system's struggles, but uh, we are in a country with a lot of uh, very difficult situations linked with uh, um, um, poverty, with uh, gender and race oppression, um, and also um, this, uh, the, the Health for All campaign started to um, show to me the, the big links uh, be between the, the social determinants and the social determination of health and uh, the production of illness um, and the production of the health systems. And uh, more than that, um, to make the link between the, the construction of the national health system and the international um, governance in health and uh, the role that international institutions uh, sometimes and a lot of times have uh, uh, going against the, the national health systems and uh, how uh, we need to understand this in a, in a global way, uh, mostly in a moment that the, the capitalism go uh, deep and deeper, uh, global and financial. So the links between, uh, can I say, the, the companies and the, the, the funds that uh, direct health in a private and uh, non-actable way are uh, very strong. So. Uh, 
I think the Health for All campaign uh, can help us uh, to link the social movements, the, the production of militant and activist uh, knowledge uh, in the academics and um, the links between uh, health workers and uh, other uh, struggles that we have in the, the health um, the health movement and uh, broader movements in a way that we can uh, get together and get to the, some roots of the problems, some roots that are international um, and uh, be strong on facing it. What I believe is that every component is very essential to drive this kind of health activism for uh, health for all. Even a policymaker, I would say, can be a health activist, and even a, a researcher can can uh, can be a health activist. But they should be doing the best in their own domain. Uh, and as I said earlier, that uh, using uh, the uh, evidence-based approach for everything, be it uh, research, be it uh, advocacy, be it policy making, it is something that we can do. Uh, to understand what is needed in the in the society, what is needed in the grassroots level. As I'm a person who is into implementation research, I have always understood one thing. See, uh, we should always uh, understand the needs and the challenges in the field, and that we cannot uh, do while sitting in our uh, clinical labs or OPDs. We need to go into the grassroots. We need to include all the patients group or the people at the periphery or community health and also community health workers uh, into our uh, decision making uh, meetings or whatever we are doing to take a decision on a particular policy or a program. Because if we are not including them, we will be leaving a very important community in our decision making and which ultimately leads to the compromising the programs and service delivery and which ultimately compromise the uh, health for all agenda and and we all know that uh, there's there's a vicious circle of uh, this uh, uh, this uh, cascade if 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 we talk about uh, the entire uh, disease spectrum actually uh, uh, controls uh, the, the nutrition the productivity the livelihoods of people who are already uh, marginalized and they, when they come into that cascade, they, they, they are not able to survive that kind of pressure. And again, they are compromising them further uh, with those diseases. So if we are not able to break that uh, vicious circle, then we are not able to, we will be again uh, raising generations which are actually uh, having uh, compromises and uh, built on the trenches of, uh, uh, of health inequity actually. So, I would say uh, if we talk about health activism and future of it from the health for all perspective, we need to sit on table, all of us need to sit on table uh, uh, to, to see, to decide, to further also uh, evaluation also, I would say. Health is extremely salient to people, not just because we're, we're living through a pandemic and multiple health crises, but because you feel it in your body, you know, like when I'm burnt out from working too hard, I, I feel it and it makes me feel terrible. So I think helping people to be in tune with their bodies and to know, well, do you know what, actually this work makes me feel bad or this food or engaging in farming makes me feel good and engaging with people's very uh, deep need to connect to each other and connect to nature is an amazing way to help re-engage our emotions, re-engage our passion and to get people involved in, in thinking about systemic change and thinking about the way that injustice Im impacts them. So I think it's one avenue for getting people involved, but I think it's also a really important avenue for holding ourselves accountable as we work to build new worlds. If people are not flourishing, if people are not able to live healthy lives in in their bodies and in their communities then are we really building the world that the world that we want to fight for and and, and a just and ecologically sustainable world so i think it's many fold in the sense of it's it's a it's a way to engage with people and to motivate them but it's also a way to to hold ourselves accountable as we um i hope in the near future not just fight against things but also um build things as well Health for All can be a platform from for these links, and um, I think in, in this way um, the the role that uh, the the 
people's health movement and the conducting of the campaign uh, can have is uh, about pot potentializing uh, the links, the international links, the regional links uh, between the, the movements uh, in the, the health sector. So, um, and it, it's very different from country to country. You know? So knowing people from PHM where, I don't know, PHM is uh, very important on the local uh, health movement in other countries that uh, have local health movements that are strong, but the PHM can help uh, about uh, making uh, exchange um, strategies. So, um, so uh, activists can know uh, what works well in the struggle uh, on, on each part, what, what, is, what are the, the common uh, challenges. Um, and that way, I think How For All can make these links. Also, How For All uh, have a very important and a uh, very singular role on defining and uh, summarizing uh, necessities from uh, health movements uh, everywhere and bringing it um, to uh, the, the global arena of um, health decisions, uh, uh, WHO and other, other places where, uh, where PHM is uh, present, uh, making links uh, between the, the observation that PHM make on, on these places and the positions that PHM can, can bring. And um, in a way that we, we can uh, link the, the local necessities, the local di diagnosis, and the, the global um, decision uh, places. And in a way that I think Health for All can, uh, can have a role that is very singular on that, uh, on a movement that uh, knows what happened on the, on the global uh, arena and also can link with uh, local activists uh, in a lot of places. So I think this is another... Um, very important direction that uh, have for all it takes.